we're going to talk about a new member of our function family, the logarithmic functions. And we've been talking about exponential functions that look like this. We talked about, um, you know, 2 to the x, for example. And we said that 2 to the x would go through 1. Now, if you remember, we learned a way to find out if a function has an inverse. Do you remember what test that was? The horizontal line test. Remember? If it passes the horizontal line test, and it does because it only hits it once, if it passes the horizontal line test, then it has an inverse. This function has an inverse. And the inverse function, if you remember, the inverse is reflected across the line y equals x. Okay, that's our reflection line. So if the exponential function goes through 1 on the y-axis, then its inverse has to go through 1 on the x-axis. So the inverse has to go through 1 on the x-axis. And if the original one has a horizontal asymptote at 0, then the new one has a vertical asymptote at 0. So our inverse function looks like that. And that is the logarithmic function, or we normally just call it log of x. L-O-G is short for logarithmic. And that is a, just a basic sketch of the parent function of the log function, or, yes, of the log function, which is the inverse of the exponential function. Okay. It's the inverse of the exponential function. So <clears throat> how do we define this little logarithmic function? What does the function do to x? Well, the best way that I've learned to explain it is using what I call the switcheroo. That's my little term for it. <clears throat> but it's basically the definition of logarithm. Let me show you how it works. If I have log base a of x equals y. Okay, now notice there is a base here. Okay, it's like a subscript, but it's a base in terms of haven't we been working with exponential functions? So you kind of have to think of it in that regard, like it's the base of the exponent. Then the switcheroo starts with the base, works to the y, and comes back to the x. Here's what the switcheroo says. It says that a to the y power must equal x. And that is what I, that right there is basically the definition of how a logarithmic function works. So, for example, if I had log base 10, all right, and let's say that it was log base 10 of 1. Log base 10 of 1. What would this number over here have to be? to make that true? Well, we're going to do this later, but it's basically asking 10 to what power makes 1? Isn't it 0? Okay. So in other words, this number right here where the question mark was would have to be 0. All right? 
And so that's how the logarithmic relationship works. It's actually an exponential relationship. All right. So let's get to some examples like you're going to see in homework. The first few examples are very easy. They're going to say right off the bat, write in exponential form. This is going to be very easy. You're just going to use the switcheroo. They're going to give you something like log base 2 of 32 equals 5, something like that. And all they want you to do is uh, what I called the switcheroo with this problem. You're going to start with your base, so I'm going to say 2 to the fifth power equals 32. Problem is done. Would you agree that 2 to the fifth power is 32? Okay, you've done it. Problem's done. We've written that log expression and that log equation in exponential form. Um, how about this one? log base 3 of 1 equals 0. I'll pause the video. You try that one on your own. Okay, that was a pretty short problem. We just do the switcheroo. It should have been 3 to the 0 power equals 1. And I think we all agree that anything to the 0 power equals 1. They'll also ask you to go the other direction. They will also say write in log form or logarithmic form. So they're going to give it to you in exponential form and they want you to write it in log form like this. They're going to give it to you as 6 to the third equals 216, something like that and then they're going to say, okay, write that in logarithmic form. What I would do, since we're basically working backwards, is I would write a log, I'd leave a space, and I'd put an equal sign, and just fill in the blanks. We always start with my base, which is 6. That 6 goes there. Then I go to the 3. The 3 goes there. And then I go to 216. So log base 6 of 216 equals 3. And we have written an exponential equation in log form. All right? We're just changing the form of it. It's very easy. So those were pretty easy. Let's get to ones where maybe you actually have to think a little bit, like these where they say evaluate. for the given value of x, and we're going to say no calculator. These problems aren't real hard either, but you do have to actually maybe do a little bit of thinking. Let's say they tell you that the function is log base 3 of x and we want to evaluate it at x equals 81. So if we evaluate a function, all right, we're wanting to find f of 81, right, if I evaluate a function. Well, when I evaluate a function, don't I plug the number in for x? So what we're doing is we're going to take this log expression and we're going to put the 81 in for x. And the function value is what I'm trying to find. So watch what we do here. I say log base 3 of 81 equals question mark. And then you do the switcheroo to find out what that question mark is. 3 to the 
question mark power is going to equal 81. Your root sheets might come in handy, but this is probably one you know. 3 to what power would be 81? Isn't it 4? So your answer here is 4. Not that hard. Sometimes you may have to use a negative exponent or um, something different. Um, how about a problem like this? The function is log base 5 of x, and we're evaluating it at 1 25th. So just like the last problem, we're going to put the 1 25th in for x, and we're going to set it equal to a question mark. And then we're going to do the switcheroo. So 5 to some power equals 1 25th. So don't I need to write 1 25th another way? Right? What power would I have to write 5 to to get this 1 25th? Wouldn't it be negative 2? Yes, it would. All right, so you're going to have some problems like that. The last thing that we need to go over is the common log. The common log, and this is the one, when you look on your calculator, you see an LOG button. That LOG button on your calculator is log base 10 log base 10. If we talk about the common log, we're talking about the one with a base of 10. So tonight, if they ask you to evaluate with a calculator, all right, let's say they give you something like this. Find out 2 log base 10 of 2.5. Well, since it says log base 10, that means I can use the log button on your calculator. So when you enter this in your calculator, you're just going to press the log key. I don't have my graphing calculator program up right now, but it's very simple. You press the log key, you press 2.5, hit enter. What is it? 0. Something. Uh, 0.795. But then, weren't we supposed to multiply it by 2? Right? See this 2 out in front? So multiply that by 2 with your calculator, and then you would get the answer. All right? So. 0.795 times 2 is 1.59. Let me make a correction here. The log of 2.5, um, the student I had talked to had already multiplied it by 2. The log of 2.5 is 0 so they had already multiplied it by 2 when they gave me that. So my final answer is not 1.59. It's uh, that original 0 0.79. It's actually 0.796. Okay? And uh, so pretty easy. We're going to stop there for today.